Well, I guess it's been a few years and since, since you last saw one of these. Now, I know what you want to do, and it's, I'm just the same, and I'm just, I'm just going to do it, because I always wanted to do that. It's okay, don't worry about it. Now, you can see this ribbon. It's full of information. In this case, it was the animals of farthing wood. I'm really sorry. I've got the DVD. It's fine. <laughs> now, the interesting thing is that at the heart of your cells is a ribbon of information as well. It's your DNA. Now, you actually have about this much, 1.8 meters of it in each cell. And the question I want you to ask yourself today is, where did your 1.8 meters come from? Parents, grandparents, great-grandparents, humans, right? Well, actually, about that much came from viruses. Now, we know that viruses, including HIV, are very good at taking their DNA and inserting it into our own. They've been doing this for millions of years, to the point where we now have over 100,000 old viruses inside us. Now, we've even, there's been so many, we've even given them a name. We call them EVEs, for endogenous viral elements. Now, time isn't very kind to these eaves, and they begin to decay to the point where they don't really work anymore. So we generally consider them as kind of viral fossils. So for a long time, researchers saw these viral fossils and thought not very much of them. But when they looked closer, they realized that in this sea of decay were little islands of preservation. Some of these viral genes had been kept in pristine working order. In fact, they were being used by your cells. Now, one of these viral genes is called syncytin. It came from a virus that infected an animal 35 million years ago. Tonight, it sat in your chromosome 7. Now, since it is a really interesting protein, it gets cells to fuse together. Viruses love this because it lets them spread infection around your body. But your body's come up with another use for this syncytin. It's now one of the central components for, forming, <clears throat> for forming the placenta. So actually, a viral gene helps protect you when you're in the womb. Now, when we looked at other mammals, we saw it's exactly the same. They've gone out there and they've captured their own syncytin from a different virus. It's that useful. Rather than evolve these things themselves, they've just stolen them from somewhere. Uh, so it seems that we've kind of been underappreciating what our eaves do for us. And when we look at it now in more detail, we see that they're there supporting our immune system. And only last month, researchers discovered an eave right at the heart of a stem cell. So... When we think about our DNA, we like to think that it's all ours. But actually, we're a bit of a Frankenstein's monster of all sorts of stuff. And that's not a weakness. It's actually a strength. Evolution has pieced us together from the best of what's out there. And Eve's a part of that mix. So this little bit of DNA, it tells us that we're the best of both worlds. And that at heart, we're all hybrid humans. Thank you very much. Judges, did you enjoy your eavesdropping? Oh. <laughs> Three minutes you have to think these up. <laughs> Zombies, my, my favourite, and of course my microphone has died again, uh, which is fine, so I'm going to resort to this, and because it's a handheld mic, I'm going to have to sing like, hello. Hi, I'm Phil, <laughs> Gemini. Now, the thing is, viruses are thought to be the zombies of the animal kingdom, as it were, even mm -hmm. if they're not in there. But the thing is with zombies, they have this sort of living dead thing. How does that function within the body? How can something remain dormant and still be part of a living system? Because it kind of goes against what we think of viruses. They need a host, and once they're in a host, they're alive. So what are these viruses doing? Exactly. Well, that's the thing about viruses is we, we like to think it's a very clean relationship. You know, the virus comes in, it, it uses us as a host and it leaves. But actually, they're leaving stuff behind the whole time. That they're, they're kind of just shuffling DNA around the ecosystem. And we're just one of those things that's receiving that DNA. So it's very difficult to say whether or not these components that are left behind are still viral, I guess. In some ways, they become part of us. We've absorbed DNA from so many places that you can't really start attributing it to humans or viruses. But you're right, in, in many ways they kind of lose their right to life in some ways and just be subsumed into ours and, and obviously carried forward through our children. So in some ways I guess they kind of never die, which is quite nice. I like that. <laughs> it, it, <laughs> the virus lives yes. on. I mean, we, it, it's never it died, but uh, have we been selective about the ones that we've conserved or have we chucked a lot out? I'm sure that we've lost a lot of very useful ones, but yes, we've been very careful that we've picked the uh, tools 
that viruses are developed which are very hard to evolve because they're very dangerous systems. If you don't get them perfectly right, they do more damage than they do good, and you end up aborting uh, life before it even starts. Something like syncytin is incredibly dangerous in the wrong hands. But what we've managed to do is take a system that's been carefully tried. The virus replicates so fast that you've got lots of chances to try different variations. And we don't mind if the viruses don't work. But with humans, it's a bit more you know, worrying if, if these things don't work. So we like it to, uh, to pick something that's actually been thought through and trialled and tested. Why this subject? I love viruses. I mean, I work on herpes. <laughs> Who doesn't? I work I mean, on herpes you virus. virus. <laughs> You've got to love virus to choose herpes virus. I hope my boss isn't here. Um, <laughs> Uh, uh, I thought it was just fascinating. The more you look at these things, the more you realise that we carry this stuff around with us all the time. And it, is, it makes us who we are, you know. Um, herpes virus is great because it, you carry it around for the rest of your life. And there's not many reasons it's great. Um, <laughs> it's but that's one of them. Um, <laughs> yay! Uh, and I just think it's great because you go the next level down and you find them there again. You just never get rid of these things. So They've made him who he is today. Please thank the viral Glenn Bleasdale. <laughs> <laughs>